hey, right before you, Yule, I got to interview Larry Schramm. And the cool thing about this interview is that I actually got him to sing at the very end. So stay tuned. You're going to love this. Here's Larry. Hi, Sienna. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and start with you telling my audience who you are and um, how do you identify yourself? Okay. My name is, uh, we're on, right? Yeah, we're on. Okay. Yeah. My name is Larry Schramm. Uh, who am I? Uh, I guess I'm a person in a world full of people. Uh, as far as uh, spiritual orientation, I'm I, definitely neo pagan, and I'm also a initiated, trained, uh, second degree uh, Wiccan uh, with a coven in Chicago. I haven't been in a coven out here, but I think you're kind of like in a coven once you're in it for the rest of your life. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I was a member, of, or I am a member of the uh, Temple of the Pagan Way in Chicago. There's another one in uh, Ohio, but it's a different group. Oh, okay. Temple of the Pagan Way, is that the tradition that... Uh... It's a very eclectic tradition. The history of it is it was initially a, a German mystery school in Chicago. And uh, then it got, I believe it was an Alexandrian uh, which got involved in that. So it goes back, uh, I want to say middle 1800s for the, for, uh, for the particular coven I was in. But again, it started initially as a German mystery school and then, then became Wiccan, but very, very uh, eclectic Wiccan. <laughs> <laughs> so how long ago was your first initiation? Um, I was initiated, I believe, in uh, 1985. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So it's been I, some time. I became directly involved with uh, paganism uh, in about 1980. Uh, I, I had been pagan before then, but I didn't know there was anybody else around <laughs> until then. <laughs> I see. That makes a lot of sense because there wasn't an internet back then. Yeah. <laughs> And so um, that kind of answers the first couple of questions on the docket here. But tell me how it has affected your life to be pagan and Wiccan. It's basically enriched it, you know. Um, I would say it probably made my marriage in many ways harder because my wife wasn't pagan and Wiccan. <laughs> oh, really? But uh, aside from that... Um, I was working as a counselor at Pontiac Prison in Illinois, which is Illinois' highest uh, maximum, or at that time, I've been out here a lot of years, it may not be true anymore, Illinois' highest maximum security institution for males. And uh, with that, I, you know, I was drinking really very heavily. And uh, one of the things that uh, my coven had me do was, that's where it really kicked in as far as getting better, was the inner pillar exercise every day, which is an old golden dawn exercise. And I, and I still do that every day. And when I started doing that, uh, without really thinking about it, I, I noticed suddenly that I'm drinking less. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I certainly have, uh, what? It certainly broadened my understanding, acceptance, uh, family of people I identify with and to. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's been basically very positive, my experience. I, I really am glad to hear that it's, you know, that universally positive. Yeah. So, how did you discover? Uh, as it happens, <laughs> the, I, I was working in the prison as a counselor. I'd been there about a year. And one of the other people who was there ahead of me, a guy named Al Sidoris, who is now on the other side of the sod, was a witch. And he got to talking to me over a couple beers after work and said, hey, I got something you'd be interested in. And uh, basically invited me to uh, go to, or told me about, and, uh, and suggested I would like to go to a, um, oh, a festival in um, Michigan that first one I went to was in Michigan. Actually, before that, though, he had me going to uh, where I went to initially was uh, Unitarian churches was where it was always up. And uh, 
his focus was uh, to some extent in Madison, Wisconsin, so I was going up there to uh, pagan events at, uh, in Unitarian churches in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do, do you serve the community in any? I have extent? in the past. Right now, I'm pretty. I'm retired, and I just I, I'm there. I go to things. Um, uh, if people are, want to ask me about stuff, I'm certainly willing to tell them what I understand to be facts. Uh, I have done, led some workshops, but it's been several years. Uh, I did one in for uh, weather working. Um, did one for uh, uh, making your own wine and beer <laughs> at a pagan event. I don't know if that necessarily counts. As. Did one for rune work. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but and probably the most significant thing I did was with George Mayer and Susie Mayer. Uh, the three of us. Uh, set up a, a pagan uh, celebration that's evolved and has been going on for over 20 years to some extent one way or another so and I certainly again I go to those things and I tell people things but uh, yeah that's about it. <laughs> so tell me that history of setting up that event with George and Susie. Which event are we talking about here? The Spiritual Anarchist Beltane. Okay oh. how did that get born? Well, um, I don't really want to name names or, or point people out, but I, I was at a, a Beltane event, and uh, a friend of mine was there, and he was well known in the community. And he and I were setting up the fob, setting the fire. I was helping put st or putting the woods and stuff up together for a big fire. <laughs> he said, "I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stay here." I said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah." He said. Uh, he said, I called and told him, you know, that I was coming, but he said, I haven't pre-registered. I said, well, that shouldn't be a problem. They all know you. Well, apparently it was a problem, and so he got told to leave. Uh, later on, um, I really couldn't tell you exactly where, but as, as part of the ritual, it was, you know, the fire was going, and I jumped the fire, and a few other people jumped the fire, and uh, suddenly uh, the person who was pretty much putting it on got up and announced we couldn't jump the fire because uh, we might get burned and uh, and there was a concern about uh, insurance and um, at that point my feeling was oh okay I understand uh, I didn't understand before I thought this was our thing and you were hosting it but I realize now it's your thing and I'm a paying guest now those are different things and I am enjoying And all of a sudden, uh, the, uh, the head of the thing got up and announced that uh, we shouldn't drop the, jump the fire because, uh, uh, I don't know, somebody might jump in the fire or something or other. And there was an insurance concerns. And I was like, well, that's kind of what you do as a witch is jump the fire. <laughs> no. Right. And for me, uh, my interpretation of this whole thing was like, okay, I understand now. I, I misunderstood before. I thought this was our thing and you were hosting it. Now I realize that it's your thing and I'm a paying guest. Now it's a good thing, I'm enjoying it, but I really want to go to an our thing instead of a your thing next year. And so I went to uh, George Mayer and Susie, uh, at that time Dahlstrom, and uh, went to George and said, uh, George, I know you kick around a lot of this wild country and stuff. Do you, you know a good place uh, that we could go have a pagan fest on public land without really having to maybe pay much of any money and uh, just have it open? And he said, I, I think I might. And he and Susie and I went out and we camped out for basically a long weekend and looked at different sites and ended up initially going to uh, some public land uh, I believe it's conservation land north of Klickitat. And we were there the first two years. Um, the second year we were there, uh, some locals. So, hi, I'm going to stop right here and explain that I let the battery die in the camera and I didn't notice it until we had finished the interview. So then we switched batteries and I went back and re interviewed. Um, so we got different answers to the same question a couple times. 
but also we had a secondary camera on the table that was running the whole time. So what I've done here is pieced together some videos, slices, same interview, same day, but um, it's a little choppy. Um, forgive me. But at the very end, we get Larry to sing. So don't go away. Here we are. And I am enjoying myself. I'm enjoying your thing. But I think next year I'd like to go to an R thing. And so, uh, and I figure if we have an R thing and it's set up so that uh, nobody is officially the person in charge, everybody's responsible for their own insurance concerns. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so that's how, and then I went to George and I said, George, well, George and Susie were, they weren't married yet, but they, they were friendly. <laughs> <laughs> And I went to them, I said, George, I said, I know you kick around and look around stuff. Do you know some good uh, public land that we could go have a festival on? That maybe wouldn't cost a whole lot of money. Actually, at that point, it was free, although now it's not. And he said, yeah, I think so. And so he and Susie and I, we spent, uh, oh, I don't know, a long weekend driving around, going to different places, camping out and thinking about what we'd like to have it. And initially, we set it up. At um, just north of the town of Clickitat, there's uh, conservation land up there where they have an old ice house. Right, yeah. And we had that there for two years. Okay. Okay. And uh, Susie was particularly concerned about driving down to where it is now because it was a steep drive and yeah. kind of scary. It is a road. precarious drive, yeah. yes. Well, it was even more precarious and it was one way there because they didn't have the stuff along the sides of the road that gives you the illusion that something might stop you if you pull over. <laughs> oh, no. No guardrails. No guardrails. Oh, that's, that's very spooky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the second year we were there, uh, some, I assume, local kids came in and liquored up a little bit in the driving uh, parking lot. and it wasn't anything that I have ever thought of as being focused at us or anything, but they were just going whoopee and shooting guns off into the air. And so after that, so he said, eh, maybe we can move to the other spot. <laughs> <laughs> so we moved to the other spot. And kids came in and were shooting some guns off in the parking lot. Um, again, it, I, I never felt like it was directed at us, but it was like, you know, unsettling. And, uh, at that point, uh, George and I had preferred the, uh, uh, a different site and we ended up going to the different site uh, the next from then on and uh, oh I, I it, it, it's gone through evolutions there's been groups hive off of it and stuff and form their own groups which is, is nice uh, it was set up so that uh, none of us was going to be in charge everybody was responsible for their own family safety and insurance it was you know it's like if you had all those people come to those places on opening day for fishing or something or other. Yeah. Kind of the right. same thing. That, yeah. You know. So that makes sense. And so that's where the anarchy piece comes Spiritual from. anarchy. Spiritual anarchy. Spir not anarchy. Spiritual anarchy. Um, you don't need a priest. You don't need a, somebody above you telling you what your spiritual focus is, is not something we're, we're into. Right. <laughs> Right. You figure out what your spiritual focus is into, and people around you can help guide you as you are open to or not open to such guidance. So... Yeah, yeah. But I, I've had times where I thought it was, it was set up so that we're not running. It's a spiritual... People say anarchist building. It not really wasn't set up as an anarchist building. It was set up as spiritual anarchist building. And so... Uh, when you get 200 people, that's really too many not to have somebody making rules. You know, yeah, the <laughs> rules need to be in place at a certain size. Yeah. 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 And I think it got to be about three or 400 people before it, it hived off there's again. Been, there's been a couple times when it got, uh, I thought, a little bit too large. Yeah. yeah. And now it's hived off into several different It's Beltanes. hived off in different Beltanes, and I think that's great. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's Good. kind of... Uh, organic that way. I agree. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's a perfect idea. Yeah. So do you have a history with um, the bigger community like the Fall Equinox Festival? I know that's where you and I have met. Well, um, one year and it was
was the year that uh, Chris Chrissy's class um, ran it. Uh, I, w I was part of the ritual for sure. I was. Uh, I've had several times when I've been part of the rituals and different rituals actually. And one year I was Prometheus. I go, how funny you say I've been Prometheus. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like last year when I was at, uh, or this year actually when I was at. Um, must have been Fall Equinox, yeah. Uh, when we were dancing with the, the goddess, and I said, wow, here it is. W what what a wonderful religion. I, I've been Prometheus, and now I'm dancing with a goddess. <laughs> what more can you want? Yeah, that is I recall being, and this is maybe, yeah, I don't know if this is what you want or not, but I recall being a spiritual anarchist melting, and this one young man came who come to a couple of them, and he was very outspoken about being a, an anarchist and he was into anarchy this anarchy that and he came there and he was looking around and he says to me he said he said where's the uh, sign-up sheet for all the different classes and stuff and I said well if you want to make one up you can you know it's uh, me and Mr. Anarchist <laughs> <laughs> you um how do you think this has affected uh, your mental health, being a pagan? I think it's been beneficial for my mental health. Um, again, when I first got involved with paganism, uh, I was working as a counselor in a prison, and uh, I was drinking pretty heavy. And uh, without making an effort to not drink heavy, uh, after I became a pagan and began to do... Uh, ritual meditations and stuff on a regular basis, uh, I just realized I was uh, not as tense and I wasn't drinking as much, which uh, was good. That's a great side effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any advice to seekers on the path? Be honest with yourself. Mm. Be honest with yourself. And open to learning new things. Um, and most important of all, I think, be tolerant of those you might not agree with as long as they're not harming anybody. Ah, yes. Those would be some of my thoughts. Yeah, I think that's really good, a good place to stand. Um, so, let's get on with the singing. Sure. I'll, I'll, the same one. Sure, let's... let's or I could do a different short one if you want for the second one, Let's although do it's a, around. a different short one. All right. Well, this this is one to me again is good for Yule, and it's uh, the Ballad of the Two Kings, uh, which delves into British mythology more than anything else, or past religion and more than anything else. I view a lot of the pagan songs as uh, as teachings in history. Frankly, yeah, uh, yeah, and they, it's really and so most of what I sing are songs that are stories, and that's probably why uh, I was requested to make sure you sang before the end of this video. I have no problem. <laughs> so, but I do need to know, how do you think your spiritual life has affected your mental health? Well, once again, I I drink less than I used to. Um, hmm. uh, I, I think, if anything, it's been positive for my mental health, to be honest. Uh, it's, it, well, for one thing, I, the, the coven I joined uh, required, well, daily meditation right off the bat, I think, is good for your mental health. And, I, you know, the inner pillar exercise is a meditation. Um, I was going to say, I also do Qigong, but that really is not related to my pagan path at all. It just happens to be for health. And it helps the muscles hurt less. <laughs> uh, <coughs> but, um, I, yeah, I, I think basically it's been good. It's helped give me, it's given me a balance, a, a, a better balance, I think, than I had before. If that makes any sense. No, it makes great sense because yeah. part of this project also is to promote paganism for mental health. Because well, that's my passion. <laughs> well, I, I again, I think it, it. Paganism is such a broad term. Uh, 
it kind of depends on which paganism. But I think I think the pagan path I'm on tends to help mental health. Um, I think there are probably some other ones I would be a little bit less con convinced of. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I have to agree with you. I hadn't really put much thought into that, but yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, when you meet new seekers on the path, what would you advise them? More than anything else, I, I would just want to ask them how they came to their path and what it meant to them, and uh, I would like to get a feel for where they're at, to be perfectly honest, and I find people are all over the place in a lot of ways, um, you know, I've, including people who are heavily tied into a belief uh, in, a, in a devil and angels and stuff like that, which to me is like, well, that's a different religion, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's to me, not to them, you know, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, any last words before we ask you to sing for us? Not really. Okay. So, I know that you, I gave you the questions ahead of time and you had some time to I, think I, it through. I did, although I, I really muffed up on the one by one. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, we always go off script on these things. Um, so, what do you want to sing for us? Well, it, you know, it asked me about a favorite. I, I, I don't work where I have favorites. I just like a lot of different things. And we're really close to Yule. And so I'd like to sing, I think, The Ballad of the Two Kings. Please which, do. Uh, which I believe is, is more a reflection of uh, Anglo-Saxon, well, probably Eng English, British <laughs> paganism from way back when with the kings. And goes, sing we of the mystery now as long ago, blood red holy berries, blood upon the snow, ever it comes, the waxing year to bring. So we bid a farewell to the holly king in the bright midsummer. The world wheel turns around, and then shall be the oak king's blood upon the ground. Ever it comes, the waning year to bring, and then shall be victorious the darksome holly king. Sing we of the mystery, now as long ago, blood red holy berries, blood upon the snow. That's the velvet. <laughs> Deep are his eyes, raven black is his throne. The maiden beside him, behind him, the throne. A skull at his feet, and a scepter of bone. Dark hound at his knees, but he sits there alone. They both hold his heart in the palms of their hands. Together they dance life and death to the land. Each solstice his throne room before him to stand. To find what for them Father Hades has planned. How shall I fear the father of change? How to refuse when he's calling my name? Both sunrise and set we weave a banner of flame. Everything changes. But all stays the same. He cuts down the corn and the grain in the field. He cuts down the sword with this bright sword of steel. He cuts a great wound that no healer can heal. The strong and the proud come before him to kneel. His beauty is cold, but his smile it is warm. By the strength of his will, all that dies is reborn. His maiden gives promise of life to the corn. And the crone leads the hunt to the sound of his horn. How shall I fear the father of change? How to refuse when he's calling my name? Both sunrise and set, weave a banner of flame. Everything changes and all stays the same. He stands all alone when the Yuletide has come. He picks up his weapon and faces the sun. The sun strikes him deep, 
and the battle is done. He falls to the earth, for the cycle has won. The father of death suffers loss with us all. His maiden must go when the spring makes its call. He sits with his crone in the dark of his hall and listens in sorrow till leaves start to fall. How can I fear the father of change? How to refuse when he's calling my name? Both sunrise and set weave a banner of flame. Everything changes and all stays the same. Of course, I thought of a short one while I was singing it, but that's <laughs> <laughs> The other one I thought of that's short yeah. is Around. Mm. Um, Catherine Madsen wrote it. And it's... My love is a garden unclosed, a stream, a fountain, a hill of living water, and all green is her screw that up though because it's actually her a well of living water not a hill pardon me <laughs> <laughs> okay that makes way more sense <laughs> so i think that this is a really good wrap up for this um anything else you want to say to the audience uh, now that we've done a couple of takes <laughs> no i don't think so offhand thank you okay well um i'm gonna go ahead and and see if it see, worked see if it works this time okay.